guys, it's Jessica from Peace Love Books, and today I'm here with the second half of my September wrap-up. I only read six books. To be fair, I think two books I finished on the 16th that I included in my first half wrap-up, so technically I read nine books the first half, eight books the second half of the month, but I only have six books to chat with you about. My new job is really slowing down my reading, which is totally fine. I just have to like get used to this new pace of reading. I read 17 books this month, which typically is really a lot for people, but... I used to read over 30, so I used to read almost twice as much as I read now, but it's fine. I'm getting used to this new reading pace of mine, and I will chat about the books. I did do a reading vlog and read three of these books for that reading vlog, so the first one I picked up is Block Shot by Kennedy Ryan. The reading vlog was all about me picking up books that are part of a series that I hadn't finished yet, so I only had one book left to read. I had started this and read maybe like 40% back when I was reading this series, but it was so serious and I wasn't really into it, so I skipped to the last book, which I loved. Books one and book three in the series are five-star reads. I'm obsessed with them. They are basketball romances. Very serious. I typically love cheating romances. I'm a very messy, angsty reader, but for some reason I just could not get into this book. So this one is about Banner and Jared. They met in college and they actually like really liked each other and Jared would go to the laundromat to study with Banner and he is also trying to get into this really exclusive club. It's kind of like a fraternity and he's had to do all these things to get in and then one night they say he had to sleep with Banner and they were making fun of her weight and saying they had to sleep with her because she's overweight. He does sleep with her but he really really likes her and so he had already wanted to like get together with her but it does come out that he was like told to do it and she freaks out and so she never wants to see him again. And so now we flash forward to when they are both sports agents and she is dating one of her clients and Jared's back in the picture. And her and Jared start a relationship and there are just some messy things that happen and she has to stay in her current relationship for certain reasons and it was not my favorite. I like don't love characters who go out of their way to sabotage someone else's life. So I feel like some characters were doing that for them where they were going out of their way to make sure that they couldn't be happy and have what they wanted because they wanted something else from them. And that's not my favorite. And so there also like wasn't too much going on in the plot and I would have loved more things to happen in here. So I gave it three stars. I wanted to love it, but this one was just a miss for me in the series. Like I said, books one and three, read them, please. I think this is the lowest I've ever rated a Kennedy Ryan book, which makes me so sad. But just, I skipped it for a reason, and I just didn't love it. Then I picked up The Right Move by Liz Tom Ford for that vlog, and this one is book two in the series. Book three actually does come out soon. And this one is a fake dating roommates romance where Ryan is the captain of his basketball team. He's like the best player in the league right now. And the heroine is his twin sister's best friend, and she catches her boyfriend of many, many years cheating on her, so she has nowhere to go, and she's like lived with him, and all of her stuff is there, and her life revolves around him. So her friend says my brother has an extra space in his apartment because she had moved out to move in with her boyfriend. So she ends up moving in and I really loved Ryan and his story. Ryan is just so interesting because he is dedicated his entire life to basketball. He was really hurt by someone in his past so he does not let people in and he has a very like regimented schedule, very much into his routine and our heroine kind of ruins that but she is a flight attendant and they end up fake dating for certain reasons and I really liked it. I did give it four and a half stars because because I wasn't the biggest fan of the third act breakup that happened at the end. It felt a little bit out of character and a little bit forced to me because I just hated seeing Ryan treat her that way when he knows he wouldn't do that to her. So I just didn't love the third act breakup because I feel like it was just thrown in there to have a third act breakup. But I'm excited for the next book because it's single dad and we got to meet Kai in here and he is a baseball player. So can't wait for the next book. Then I did have to listen to this audiobook for a read along I'm doing. I listened to Wolf Song by TJ Klune. This is a reread and I gave it five stars again. I will say the audio is not my favorite. So if you do read these, please physically read it. I wasn't the biggest fan of the narrator and like he made Joe the, it's an MM werewolf romance. Joe is the werewolf, Ox is the human. And Joe Joe is young in the beginning, but even when Joe aged up, this is like a an epic romance takes place over like a decade, and he made Joe sound really young until the very end. And I was like, even when he's like 18, 19, he should not sound like he's 12. So that did bother me, and I just did not love the narrator's voice, and the narration kind of like made the story drag a little bit, because like I said, this is an epic romance. It spans pretty much their 10 years of them meeting when Joe is like young and Ox is a teenager, and then goes through their 20s when they do fall in love with one another. 
very much fated mates and they have to try to defeat this really bad werewolf. So big epic battle in the end. I still really love their relationship. It's so found family. Like if you read this series, you really love TJ Klune more so for his found family than his romances, but I do think it was a very epic romance. I still loved it and we had a really fun discussion for our read along. This video is going to be over so fast. I have three books left to talk about and one of them was a DNF. So then I read Twisted Lies by Anna Huang. This one is book four in the Twisted series. I did finally read it. I've been putting it off because book two is my favorite and Twisted Love was good. I gave that four stars. Twisted Hate I liked but it was not my favorite and everybody loves Twisted Hate and so I was hesitant to read this one. This was my favorite of the series. Oh my gosh. It is Christian and Stella. Christian owns a security company and he also does a lot of like cyber stuff and he is a very dangerous man. He can take you out whenever he wants to. Literally. Like literally and figuratively. Like he can ruin your life or he can just like take you out. So he sees Stella around a lot and Stella is a social media influencer and she just gets fired from her job at this magazine and so she really needs to help her chances of getting this really big not sponsorship but like she'll be like the face of the company if she gets it and it's a really big money opportunity for her and she's been stuck at 900,000 followers for so long and cannot break that million mark and she sees this couple who's been blowing up because people really love watching couples together on social media and so her friends are like you should fake date someone or get a boyfriend and she's like no and then the chances pop up where Christian says he needs someone to take to functions and be his girlfriend and and he'll be her fake boyfriend but she just can't show his face and so they start fake dating and Christian is so overprotective of her oh my gosh I loved him so much and there were points where he literally takes people out for touching her the wrong way and I'm just like yes please oh my gosh I loved him so much so much pining in here but like secret pining because he didn't want to tell her how he felt and it was so good it's very slow burn so slow burn this book is so long and my only complaint is that like they were happy and in love for a little bit too long like I definitely was skimming through the epilogue which it's long because it wraps up the series so we see all of the couples and then we get the bonus scene and I just didn't read the bonus scene because I'm not someone who needs a couple happy and in love I just wanted to see them pining for each other so so good five stars the next book was a DNF and I'm so sad because I don't normally DNF books but I feel like with the pace that I'm reading I definitely need to DNF more because my reading time is so precious now so I listened to the audiobook of The Long Game by Elena Armas and I made it about 60% through this was for Ravish by Romance Book Club that I have with Lacey and I just was not loving it it was very slow and at the consensus in the book club was three three and a half stars anyways well, most people rated it so there were a handful that really loved it but everybody else when we were chatting didn't love it I feel like there was just a lot that was not fleshed out like she was working PR for her dad's soccer team there was some big thing that she like attacked the mascot PR nightmare it went viral so they send her off to this small town to help this little league team like little girls and the hero is a soccer player coaching them. So this definitely felt very, very rom-com, which is not my favorite. I don't like rom-coms, but I love the Spanish Love Deception. It's not a rom-com. I didn't read her second one, but people in the live show were saying she's definitely getting more rom-com, and this is the most rom-com out of all of her books. And I, I was just like, this feels like there's no purpose. Like there was not a lot of plot to it. They're just like hanging out in a small town, running into each other. They went on a date. There were like goats, goat yoga involved. And it just felt like it was trying too hard, but like not enough was fleshed out. And so they talked to me about like what was revealed at the end. And even then I was like, but we didn't really get a sense of like the town, the plot, the players, everything. Like, I just feel like this was just kind of surface level and I just didn't really care about the characters so I stopped reading and I've seen a lot of people not enjoy this one so that also was like I don't think I'm missing anything by not finishing it so the last book that I read I started earlier in the month had to do my reading vlog put it down for a little bit it was a recommendation from a couple friends and that's only for the week by Natasha Bishop this one I started though right after I finished Manicold and I caught like 70 80 percent into it and nothing was holding my attention after reading Manicold I was like give me something that's gonna destroy me oh now I'm gonna go pick up this really cute romance about this girl who hooks up with this guy on her sister's destination wedding so like her sister's getting married to her ex and so everybody's like oh my gosh you're okay like I know you haven't moved on she's not dating anybody and she's like 
I don't like him anymore. Like, he's with my sister. It's totally fine, and she's okay with it. And a uh, groomsman uh, for the wedding is the ex's best friend who's been in love with her since she was dating the ex. So he made sure he was not around a lot because he couldn't deal with them seeing each other. And now they're at this wedding, and it's a destination wedding. Tropical, very nice, and her sister's a nightmare. I did not like her sister. I don't love, like, vindictive, mean characters, and, like, her sister was very mean to her, and I was like, I don't love this, and she was just sneaking around hooking up with the hero, and it was nice. It was just, like, a fun summer fling romance where they really liked each other, and there was wedding drama, but it was not what I was in the mood for. So it's really hard rating a book that's a genre that you're just like, it's wrong time. I think I would have liked it if I read it when I was really wanting like those fluffy romances but I was like give me like I'm obsessed and will do anything for you angst and wolf song epic romance manacled epic epic romance and this one was just like little fluffy in the middle of all of that so I'm giving it three and a half stars but keep in mind that is because I just needed something more in my romance and it was just a nice time I'm like okay they're on vacation now they're hooking up. It was very spicy, but I just wanted a little bit more to it. So yeah, I've seen a lot of people love it though. If the synopsis sounds interesting to you, definitely pick it up. And those are the six books that I read in the second half of the month. Let me know if you've read these and what your thoughts are and what you've read this month. I would love to hear. And that's all I have. As always, thank you so much for watching and have a good day.